Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Rasulullah. All praises are due to Allah, the creator, the cherisher, and the sustainer of this universe. And may his peace and blessings be upon his noble prophet Muhammad and his descendants and companions and followers, dear respected brothers and sisters. Jazakumullahu khayran for coming. This is the fourth lesson in our Tarbiya Imaniya workshop after the introduction. So this is like number five. Before starting, but actually today's topic is a very interesting one. It's called كَيْفَ نُحِبُّ اللَّهَ وَنَشْتَاقُ إِلَيْهِ How can we love Allah and feel longing for Him? So it's a very interesting one, inshallah. Very important one. But before going through our topic, I need to comment a little bit on the uh, homework. Some of you are still not doing the homework at all. Or maybe doing the homework, but not sending the emails. And I spoke about that last time. That's not nice. And it doesn't keep our yani, surveys and calculations yani, accurate. So please, send me the email. Second, some of you, I see them struggling with the homework, doing the homework, but they skip. They skip one or two days. Like, for example, uh, 101, ZM. You, you skip days. Uh, also, uh, 108. You also skip days. Uh, 109, same thing. I see others who are really doing a good job. Uh, uh, reading every single day. And when I say reading the Quran, I mean reading with reflection. Reading with reflection, with contemplation. Not reading like before without understanding and without contemplation. I was telling one of the brothers uh, uh, right now that when I was in uh, Lebanon last week, on the way from Tripoli to Beirut, I started reading uh, in Surah Al-Ma'idah. And then I saw that those people that Allah is talking about who are actually the Aryans. The, uh, the, uh, the Aryans are those who are the true followers of Jesus, son of Mary. Those who said there is no God except Allah. Jesus is a messenger of Allah. Actually, those people that Allah spoke about in Surah Al-Ma'idah, they are asking Allah, Saying, وَمَا لَنَا لَا نُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَمَا جَاءَنَا مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَنَطْمَعُ أَنْ يُدْخِلَنَا رَبُّنَا مَعَ الْقَوْمِ الصَّالِحِينَ And we wish that Allah would let us in to, the, to paradise with the righteous people. And I stopped. مَعَ الْقَوْمِ الصَّالِحِينَ With the righteous people. They are not considering themselves righteous. They are not even asking Allah to make them among the righteous. They just ask Allah to let them in with the righteous. So this is too humble. Yeah. What's that? They see themselves very small. They see themselves as the worst people. And then I went back, two verses back, and I saw that Allah is describing them as humble people, saying, This is because from among them there are priests, who are uh, 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 not arrogant. So Allah spoke about them being humble. So they are very humble to the extent that they even ask Allah to let them into Jannah with the good people. But what is their status before Allah? How Allah sees them? The verse after says, فَأَثَابَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِمَا قَالُوا جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah said, so Allah uh, entered them into gardens underneath. There are rivers, flowing rivers. And this is the reward of المحسنين. The good, the righteous. You know, there are levels. There is Islam, and then there is Iman, then there is Ihsan, perfection of faith. So before Allah, they are perfect believers. Before they, but they see themselves as the worst people. And then I started to reflect 
What does these ayahs tell me? They are telling me that the more you humble yourself and the more you see yourself low, the more high before Allah you are. The more high in the, in the sight of Allah you become. So this is what I mean about reflection. You read the verse and you start putting yourself inside the verse. What is the lesson benefited from the verse? How can I benefit from every verse in the Quran? This is what I mean. So when I say, you send me here 60 minutes, 40 minutes, 55 minutes, whatever. I mean with reflection, not reading the Quran without reflection. Any verse read without reflection, stop, go back, start all over. Because it did not benefit you. The reason why Allah descended the Quran is to reflect upon it. Okay? There are people who are doing good work. And they are struggling hard with their, with their homework. But, for example, here, brother 114, you are going 60, 50, and then 40, 60, 40, 30. Don't decrease. And, and, and try not to, to do less ever. Okay? Try. I, I'm expecting that maybe you had an exam or something. Okay, but don't keep going 30, 20, 10. No. Try to make the average 60, 50. This is your average, with reflection, okay? There are others also, for example, the 125. You are doing good, 60, 60, but why are you skipping some days? Don't skip, please. Many of you skip days, and you will not be benefiting like that. One of the sisters wrote me an email last week informing me that she did the issue, you know, the homework that I did not want to give you, which is the backbiting homework. She said, actually, I wrote six people informing them that I, I backbited them. Is it backbiting? Backbited or backbit? Past. No, the past tense. Backbited? Backbit. Backbit. Backbitten. Okay, when you... Okay, uh, uh, you have to tell me. Anyway, so she informed six people that she committed this against them. And she said, even if they don't give me positive feedback, I feel clean like that. And I was so happy. I was so proud of her. Next day, three people sent her. Two for giving her and one asking forgiveness from her. Because she did the same to her too. Subhanallah. But this is how our life can change. I'm sure that this sister will not go back to do this again. But I wish that she can do her homework regularly. And she listens to me right now. Because her, her Quran homework is not done regularly. That's not enough. What I want from you, number one, is to read the Quran with reflection every single day. Please, even if you're very busy, open the Quran for 15, 20 minutes. To open it. But you have to, we are now trying to get our hearts attached to the Quran. Now I want to ask the brothers who actually, uh, because they are those who are um, in front of me, who are doing their homework regularly. Did any one of you started to have some more love to the Quran than before or something? More attraction to the Quran than before? If so, yes, yes. Anyone else? Show me your hand. You started to have this because of the reflection? Good. I want to, because this is actually um, uh, a phenomenon that starts during this phase of the workshop, which is I started to love the Quran very much, much more than before. I started to have some feelings towards the Quran. Let's now analyze this. When you love someone, you love his words, you love his letters, you love his emails. You know what? You open his emails, you read it, and you keep it. If a friend tells you, didn't you read this? Delete it. No, no, I'm not going to delete it. Why? You read it. Yeah, it's not of your business. I like it. I want it. I will read it again. Why? Because you love the person, so you love his words. So actually, it's not your love for the Quran that increased. It is your love for Allah that increased, but you are unaware of this. You started to love Allah more than before. And 
the manifestation of this is loving the Quran more. So this is your analysis that you started to love the Quran, but actually you started to love Allah more than before. This is the issue. Uh, what is love? Love, as I said, one of the feelings of the heart, a very important feeling in the heart. And it is a way of dealing with others. But it is dealing non-physically with others, non-materialistically with others. It is dealing with the heart. It's a dealing where you feel more attracted to someone. This is called love. Okay? There are manifestations for love. <coughs> Signs for love. When you love someone, you speak a lot about him. You know, you, you have a friend, and every time he sees you, he keeps talking about his wife. You don't want to hear about his wife, but he keeps talking about his wife. Why does he keep mentioning his wife? Because he loves her. He himself, maybe he doesn't know that. But he, you see him speaking frequently about the loved one. Longing for him. You don't feel good when you're away from him. You feel like you want to meet him. If you meet him every day in Isha, you always feel like you want Isha to come because you meet him, the, the loved one, you see him there. You feel the desire to be alone with him. So when you love someone, you don't really like others coming when you are together. You like to be alone with him. When you love someone, you love, actually the word in Arabic is called uns. The word uns doesn't exist in the English language. It is the opposite of uh, loneliness. So you don't feel lonely when you are with him. It means you love his companionship. You love to be with him. Being with him makes you feel good. And you become angry from what angers him. Because if anything angers him happens, you get angry because it will make him angry. You become happy for what pleases him. If anything that pleases him happens, you're pleased. Because he will be pleased. So you love him. You always think about him. You always mention him. And you love what he loves. You, you, someone says, you know what? I didn't love uh, uh, chicken pies before. But since I met this beautiful person and I saw him eating chicken pies... I started to love chicken pies. So you start to love what he loves. And you sacrifice for him. When you bring someone a gift, that's a sacrifice. You sacrifice with your money. When you go to visit someone, you are sacrificing time and effort. So this is sacrifice. Same thing. When you love Allah, you mention Allah a lot. You say, by the grace of Allah, this happened. You don't say just this happened. You keep mentioning him a lot. Uh, you start longing for him. Well, we don't see him, so we, don't, we can't have him with us now physically. So what we do is we go to the Quran and we like to be, we, we long for the Quran. You start to feel like, ah, I want to go home because I want to do my homework. Your friends tell you, hey, come on, we're going to Maeda and have dinner. No, no, you have dinner. I have, I have something to do. So you feel longing for Allah through longing for the Quran. Feeling the desire to be alone with Allah by feeling the desire to be alone with the Quran. You take the Quran and you shut the door and you don't want anyone with you in the room. You want any distraction because you are with him. Because you are with, his, with the words of Allah. Same thing. You love his companionship. You love it when you are with the Quran. So these feelings start growing at this phase of the Workshop. The more you read with reflection, the more you do effort. I'm telling you, I don't care about how many verses you read. The less, the better. If you tell me, I kept reading two, three verses for a whole hour, this is the best. Do that. We are not in a hurry. We are not in a hurry. We are now developing a relationship with the Quran. Okay, many of us would say, 
I am sure that I love Allah. But I don't have those feelings. I don't have those signs. So some of you started to feel uh, actually um, uh, uh, irritated now because maybe those signs, they don't have them. While they believe that they love Allah, it, let me tell you, every Muslim loves Allah. But the problem is we love other things also besides Allah. So we love our parents, we love our spouses, we love our children, we love our money, we love our uh, we love uh, fame. People like to be famous. We love power. We love to be powerful people. Huh? So the problem is that these things, we love them more than we love Allah. And the more the space of love of these things in your heart, the less the space of love of Allah. And this is the problem. What do we need to do? We need to kick out the things that we should not love, like loving fame, loving power. Kick it out. And keep the love of the things that you are allowed to love, like your parents and your children and your wife, your spouse, of course, I mean, and your, your uh, money even. You can love money. But make their space much, much smaller than the love for Allah. Make the love of Allah what dominates your heart. And that's what Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ There are some who choose to worship others besides God as rivals to him, loving them with the love due to Allah. Loving them with the love equal to the love to Allah. But the believers have greater love for Allah. The more they believe, the more the love of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said three things. That if someone has them in his heart, he will feel the, the sweetness of Iman. Number one, that Allah and his messenger become dearer to his heart that, than anyone else. So number one, that the love of Allah and the messenger of Allah who delivered the message of Allah and the word of Allah should be bigger than anything else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned, warned from loving anything more than him. And he said in Surah At-Tawbah, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وعشيرتكم وأموال اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا, فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين الله said say if your fathers your sons your brothers your wives your tribes, your wealth that you have acquired, the trade which you fear will decline, and the dwellings you love are dearer to you than Allah and his messenger and the struggle in his cause, then wait until Allah brings about his punishment. A strong warning from loving anything more than Allah. And then Allah said, and Allah does not guide those who break away from him. He considered loving others more than him a break away from him. So we need to love Allah more than anything. And even when we love others, we should love them for the sake of Allah. It is said, <coughs> then when a person loves another person, he loves everything that he has, even his dog. How can a person love Allah and doesn't love his servants? So I love every Muslim. I love every servant of Allah. This is what we should do. You know what? I love some of you here. I know them. I know their faces. And I love them. Wallahi, I love them. I don't even know their names. 
But for the sake of Allah, I love them. Those are the worshippers of Allah who sacrifice their time and their money and they come to the mosque. How come I don't love them? How come? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will go on the day of judgment and call upon those who love each other for the sake of Allah, saying, my shade today is for those who love each other for the sake of Allah. Let them come to the shade. The shade on the day of judgment, when the sun comes close to the, heart, to the heads and the people start drowning in their sweat. People will be looking for the shade. No shade except for few people, few types of people. And Allah will say, it's for those from among the types, those who loved each other for the sake of Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, the strongest knot, the strongest tie of faith is loving and hating for the sake of Allah. So even when you hate, you don't hate someone because he is better than you, because he's more rich than you, because he got a job that you, you wanted. No. You hate for committing a sin. If he quits the sin, he becomes the dearest to your heart. Let Allah become the core of your heart. How can I love Allah? By looking around me in the universe at the creation of Allah. And this is a new homework that will start starting today. 15 minutes every day. Looking at the, at the creation of Allah. Reflecting at the creation of Allah. Look at the flower. Look at the leaves and the numerations. Look at the peppermint leaf. Its shape, its strong smell, its course. And look at any other leaf in the street. You may, it may be soft and doesn't smell anything. Look at the leaf of the grass. It's long and sharp and doesn't smell. And it's variations. Look at these variations and say, In the Quran it says, The creation of Allah who perfected everything. Say, Subhanallah. Glory be to Allah who perfected everything. Look at the cat. Look at the dog. Look at everything that he created. It's beautiful. Go out and take a picture with your eye. Everything beautiful is created by Allah. Everything ugly that you will see is man-made. Even if what's man-made is something beautiful, like a Mercedes 2014, that's beautiful. But believe me, you cannot compare it to the flower. Allah perfected everything. Man did not perfect everything. Even if the creation of Allah is something like a dry tree. Zoom in or zoom out. Zoom in the dry wood and you will see geometric lines that are marvelous. Or zoom out from the dry tree and look at it like that with the background of the sky and the the, 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 the clouds, you will see a beautiful portrait. Too. So, starting today, we will start reflecting upon the creation of Allah. Some scholars said, said there are two Qur'ans. A Qur'an Mastur, which is Qur'an in lines, which we read, and Qur'an Mandur, a Qur'an that we see in the creation of Allah. So this is also a Qur'an. Even the verses of the Qur'an in Arabic is called what? Ayah. Right? Ayah in Arabic means miracle. So those are the miracles. We read the miracles of Allah. And we see the miracles of Allah. What will you say when you see someone, if you see someone talking to the moon, you will say that this man lost his mind or something. No. Actually, can you imagine that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu taught us to talk to the moon in Ramadan? It's the sunnah when you see the crescent of Ramadan to say, Hilalu khayrin wa rujd, 
ربنا وربك الله a crescent of righteousness and goodness my lord and your lord is Allah والله that's a very sentimental religion this creation around you is a Muslim creation it's a worshipping creation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said everything around you knows how to pray everything knows how to pray and how to make tasbih but you don't know how they do that everything so look at the creation around you and think of yourself like a part of this creation and you cannot claim that you love someone if you don't know him you need to know him to love him that's why you need to reflect upon the names of Allah you need to read the meanings of the names of Allah to understand the names of Allah and I remind you again Prophet Muhammad وسلم, <coughs> was reciting in Surah Al-Infitar Ya ayyuhal insanu ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem O mankind what has lured you away from God your generous Lord and then the Prophet said, his ignorance. The ignorance of man lures man away from God. So ignorance is the enemy. It's our enemy. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned three things that if you do, you can be excused. But ignorance is not one of them. The Prophet said, an ummati al wa my ummah will be excused for their unintentional mistakes. If you do something by mistake, unintentional, Allah will give you an excuse. Forgetfulness. If you forget, even if you forget to pray, when you remember, pray. So forgetting is something that you will not be held accountable for. And what else? If you are ever forced to commit a sin, so if someone pulls a gun in your head, and tells you to drink alcohol, drink it. Allah will not hold you accountable for that because you were forced. But he didn't say ignorance. Ignorance does not, is not an excuse. And people actually do not render the respect to Allah that he deserves. And that's what Allah mentioned in the Quran several times. مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They did not render to Allah the respect that he deserves. Because they are ignorant about Allah. Imam Ibn Rajab Hanbali says, the nutrition of the heart and the soul, there is no nutrition for the heart and the soul except the knowledge about Allah. Knowing how great and how exalted and how high he is will lead you to fearing him and exalting him and holding him great and high. Feeling his companionship and enjoying his companionship and longing for him. But knowledge comes first. You need to have love for Allah, but this love should be valuable. And the valuable love is not just knowing who Allah is in your mind, having knowledge. No, this knowledge should move to the heart. For example, if I know in my mind, in my head here, I know that Wayne Rooney is the best football player in Manchester United. And if Manchester United plays a game without Wayne Rooney, they will lose. This is an idea. When can I say that it became a belief? It's when... Manchester United go start a game without Wayne Rooney, so I feel angry. Now I believe that he is an important player because the idea in my head started to move the feelings. And then when the referee uh, stops the game and I see Wayne Rooney coming down and he will play, I feel happy. This means that I started to believe. So believe is when what's in your mind starts to move your heart okay it can be a good belief or a bad belief 
I'm not talking about now if this is good to believe in Wayne Rooney or not. I believe, I'm telling you that belief is when what's in your mind starts to move the feelings in your heart. And this is, when it comes to Allah, it's called servitude, ubudiyah. You become true servant of Allah when most of the feelings in your heart are directed towards Allah. Love should be for Allah. Hating should be for what Allah hates. Fear should be from Allah, not anyone else. Even greed. Greed. You should feel like you want what Allah has for you. Not what people have in their hands. Not what people have in their possessions. This leads us to talk about that. The, the relationship with Allah. Every relationship, in order to be successful, the terms of the relationship should be understood by both parties. So you need to understand the relationship with Allah. Number one, Allah who al khaliq Allah is the creator. And this is mentioned about 1,000 times in the Quran. The word khalaqa more than 200 times, which means create. And the word ja'ala made, serving the meaning of creation about 300 times. And so many other terms like start, like ibda', at-taswir, innovation, imaging, all these words came in the Quran emphasizing that Allah is the creator. So always emphasize on this when you read the Quran and about his creation. When you establish this, you establish the, the first knot in the relationship with Allah. In Surah Al-Kahf, when the, in the second story of the owner of the two gardens, when his uh, friend, the believer, told him, when he saw him arrogant because of his money, he told him, Are you committing this belief against the one who created you? But actually, I expected him to say, against the one who is providing for you. Because the man is arrogant because of his money. Why is he reminding him that Allah is the creator? He should remind him that Allah is the sustainer. But no. The first and the most important in the relationship with Allah, that he is the creator. So he's reminding him that Allah is the creator. Second, Allah who will malik. Allah is the owner. He owns everything. He owns you and what you own. Yeah, but I own things too. What is the difference between our ownership and his ownership? He is the real owner and you are the supplementary owner. You know when you have an account in the bank and you make a supplementary card for, for a relative to use it. You are the owner of the money, but you allow someone else to have access. So Allah allowed you to have access on some of his possessions to test you. Allah said in the Quran, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا مَا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ زِينَةً لَهَا لِنَبْلُوَهُمْ we have adorned the earth with attractive things so that we may test people to find out which of them do best. So Allah is testing you. When you give 20 pounds for your child, you are testing him to see, to monitor how will he use them. Okay, I also own things. Yes, but I don't have full control on my possessions. Allah has full control. Imagine that you have a piece of land. In this piece of land, there are trees. On those trees, there are apples. Who is the owner of the trees and the apples? You. Okay. As the owner, can you control the amount of apples? You cannot. Why? You're the owner, but you don't have full control. Allah has full control on his possessions. And number four, or number five, Allah is the sustainer, al-razzaq. له مقاليد السماوات والأرض يبسط الرزق لمن يشاء ويقدر إنه بكل شيء عليم The keys of the heavens and the earth are his He provides abundantly for whoever he will He has full knowledge of all things So he provides abundantly He gives to anyone With his awesome mercy he's even given Giving for those who deny his very existence Even those who say he doesn't exist, he provides for them. 
He provides for the fish in the streams. He provides for the birds in the skies. And he provides for us here. Subhanallah. And number five, Allah who al Hadi. He is the guide. He's the one who guides. Mujahid, a very important uh, interpreter of the Quran and a student of Ibn Abbas said, he guided the animals to where they can eat and drink and he guided people to the right path and to the wrong path. And then he left them to choose freely. So he guided us to the right and to the wrong path. قَالَ رَبُّنَا الَّذِي أَعْطَى كُلَّ شَيْءٍ خَلْقَهُ ثُمَّ هَدَى Our Lord is He who gave everything its form and then gave it guidance. Creation without guidance equals chaos. Creation plus guidance equals a strong system. We live in a strong system. Nothing in this world is by chance. Atheists say it all started by chance. We say nothing is by chance. And the sixth is Allah who al Khabir. Allah is all aware. He's all aware of everything. This whole relationship is summarized in a very short verse. Allah lahu al Khalqu al Amr. By His command is the creation and the command. And this leads us to talk about the three scenarios of the relationship with Allah. There are three scenarios for a relationship with Allah. You do the good, you stay away from evil because you fear Allah. That's good. Not bad. So fear is one of the scenarios. The second is you do good and you stay away from evil because you hope. Or you, it's a type of greed also. You hope, you wish to have the good things that he has for you in this life and in the hereafter. You want his blessings in his life and in the hereafter. This is also good. But those are not the two best scenarios. There is the perfect scenario, which is you do the good, you stay away from evil because you love him. Love. So fear, hope, and love are the three scenarios that should be in our relationship. I didn't say that we should only love Allah and not fear his punishment and not hope his Jannah. I did not say so. Because actually, the three of them makes you a balanced person. Listen, Iman is like a sine wave. You know a sine wave? Iman increases and decreases according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيَزْدَادَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِيمَانًا مَعَ إِيمَانِهِمْ And let those who believe increase their faith. So faith increases. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the one who steals doesn't steal while he is a believer. And the one who fornicates doesn't fornicate while he is a believer. So also it, it decreases. So it increases and decreases. When the Iman increases to the peak, here you are uh, in love with Allah. So you do everything because you love him. But because you are a human being, your iman definitely will decrease. While decreasing, here comes the role of the two gifts given to us by Allah. Jannah and Nar. Paradise and hellfire. Gifts for the believers in this dunya because they remind us not to let our iman drop under the zero and start doing sins. No, rectify the wave again. Okay? I hope many here are engineers and electricians. So they will understand what I was saying. Anyway, those who worship Allah with one scenario fell into bid'ah. Like the Kharijites, Al-Khawarij. They fell into the bid'ah because they worshiped, they worshiped Allah through fear alone. They said, if someone commits a major sin, he will go eternally to hellfire, even if he's a Muslim. So through fear, they fell into the bid'ah. On the other side, the, the opposite side of them, al-murji'ah, the deferrers, 
they also fell into the bid'ah because they worshipped Allah through hope alone. They said, no sin will lead into punishment as long as you're a believer. Too much Protestant. Yeah, this is actually the, how Protestants say, by the way. So no, this is called deferrers. That's why Protestants are considered murji'ah, deferrers. You have to worship Allah through the three scenarios. But try to make love number one always. And also you need to understand that Allah loves you. You see, he created and he owned and he controlled and he gave and he guided. And after all this, we did not follow his command. We said, by his command is the creation and the command. So he commanded and we did not follow his commands. And then what did he do to us? Did he punish us? No, he's sending us very tender messages in the Quran. Imagine this. We, the sinners, he is sending us. Say, O oh my servants who have harmed themselves with their excess, do not despair of my mercy. Allah forgives all sins. He is truly most forgiving, most merciful. Subhanallah. He doesn't need to tell us this. He can exchange us with some better people. But no, he continues saying, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ is it not time for the believers to humble their hearts to the remembrance of Allah and the remembrance of the truth? Allah is telling you, isn't it time to humble yourself to, my, to me and to, and to the truth? Allah is telling you, isn't it time? Subhanallah. He said, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Escape to your Lord, not from your Lord. So we need to understand that. To have love for Allah, you need to plant the seeds of love in your heart. Among the ten commandments of Allah to Moses, Allah gave Moses ten commandments. Among them is, وَأَن تُحِبَّ الرَّبَّ إِلَاهَكَ مِن كُلِّ قَلْبِكَ وَمِن كُلِّ فِكْرِكَ وَمِن كُلِّ قُدْرَ وَبِكُلِّ قُدْرَتِكَ You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. I want you to remember this commandment because at the end of my lesson, I will show you what the Prophet ﷺ said. He had a special dua, which will be also our homework. And it will be sent to you by email, inshallah, probably tomorrow, if not tonight, inshallah. So number one, you need to know that Allah loves you. Why would Allah love us? Why would Allah love human beings more than other creatures? Is it because we are very precious? We are made of gold or silver or diamonds? Nothing. You know what? If you bring a human being and you just yani, put him under very high temperature and pressure until he becomes liquid, he will become what? Some oil and some uh, phosphorus and some elements that would make like three pieces of soap. That's it. Well, يعني, يعني, materialistically, we don't worth mm, two pounds. Any one of us. Is it because we have uh, long lifespans? We don't. Then Allah could have loved the mountains then. They are there since millions of years. Is it because we are the strongest? We are not the strongest. You cannot race with a horse. You cannot compare your resp respiratory system with a dolphin. You cannot fight with a lion. Why then? Why? It is because of the divine blast which Allah breathed into us, which is connecting this clay with the heavens. This, this blast that Allah breathed into the human being made you special. That's why Allah loves the human being. And Allah there are manifestations for his love to us. Number one, honoring the human being by telling, commanding the angels to bow down and prostrate for Adam. The angels. This honor for the human being. Honor for the humankind. And also by subjecting all the world to serve us. 
وسخر لكم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض جميعا منه He has subjected all that is in the heavens and the earth for your benefit as a gift from him. And this honoring has nothing to do with Iman until now. Yani just for being a human being, you are honored. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Isra, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمَ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَرَزَقْنَاهُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَفَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا We have honored the children of Adam and carried them by land and sea. We have provided good sustenance for them and favored them specially above many of those we have created. Just for being a human being, you are honored. In a hadith Qudsi, Allah says, لا تمثلوا بعبادي Do not mutilate the bodies of my servants. We're talking about what? The enemies of Allah that were killed in the battles of the Prophet. And the, the Allah says, don't mutilate the bodies of my servants. That's what the Prophet said. Allah says, لا تمثلوا بعبادي Those are my servants. They are not good servants. They are actually disobedient. But still, they are slaves of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Fight in God's cause against those who fight you but do not start hostilities. God does not love those who start hostilities. Probably, we're talking about the Enemies here who are actually probably non-Muslims, disbelievers, enemies of Allah. Still Allah said, do not start hostilities against them. They are bad people. Just don't do that. A human being is special. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينَ وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا out of their love to him, they feed the poor, the orphan, and the POW, the prisoner of war. Who is here? What? A disbeliever and an enemy of Allah and a very bad person, an oppressor who came to, to, to uh, occupy our land and kill our, uh, us and to rape the women. Still, he is now vulnerable. Treat him nicely. So, subhanallah, subhanallah. How did the Prophet speak about the prisoners of Badr, the battle of Badr, who killed Lady Sumayya by jabbing her with a spear in her private part and torturing Bilal and doing all these nasty things. He said, Take good care of them. Subhanallah, this is us. We are the Muslims. Now, I want to show you also another reflection I was reading the Quran and I found that Allah says وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ In Surah Al-Shura it says the, the heavens are almost broken apart from above as the angels proclaim the praises of their Lord and ask forgiveness for those on earth. I stopped here. What? The angels are asking forgiveness for us? Wait a minute. Why? Why? Excuse me. We're not friends. We're not relatives. We were not colleagues. Why would the angels ask forgiveness for me? And I kept thinking. I didn't find any reason except one. Because they know that Allah loves us. So when you love and you want to come close to someone... So you start telling him to take care of his children. He would take care of them, whether you say or not. But he will like that you tell him this. So to please Allah, they are making dua for us because they know that Allah loves us. Listen to the verses in Surah Ghafir. Amazing, amazing. Those angels who carry the throne of those who surround it. Celebrate the praise of their Lord and have faith in Him. 
Listen, they beg forgiveness for the believers, saying, Our Lord, you embrace all things in mercy and knowledge, so forgive those who turn to you and follow your path. Save them from the pains of hell and admit them, Lord, to the lasting gardens you have promised them, together with their righteous ancestors, spouses, and offspring. You alone are the Almighty, all wise. Protect them from all evil deeds. All this dua is for us. Because they understand and they know that Allah loves us. You want to establish the love for Allah in your heart? Number one, let know that he loves you. Allah speaks to the angels proudly, proud of us. The Prophet said that when we go to Hajj, Allah tells the angels, these are my servants. They came ragged from every deep mountain pass, begging my mercy and my forgiveness. Let know that if their sins were as many as the sand grains and as many as the rain drops and as many as the foam of the sea, I would still forgive all of them. Subhanallah. How Allah values the human soul. Any human soul, Muslim or non-Muslim. Allah says in the Quran, we decreed to the children of Israel that if anyone kills a person, unless it be in retribution for murder or spreading corruption in the land, it is as if he kills all mankind. And if he saves a life, it is as if he saves all the lives of all mankind. So one human soul equals the human souls of all mankind before Allah. What if this human soul is the soul of a believer? Listen, we said just a soul equals the souls of all mankind. But if it's a soul of a believer, the Prophet Sallallahu said, لَزَوَالُ الدُّنْيَا أَهْوَنُ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ قَتْلِ مُؤْمِنٍ بِغَيْرِ حَقِّ The unjust killing of a believer is worse than the destruction of the whole world. The soul of a believer. The Prophet told us in a hadith that Allah is more pleased with the repentance of his servant than a traveler who lost his ride, his camel or something, with all his luggage and food and drink on it in a vast desert. So definitely he will die. And he lost hope to find it. Then while resting under a tree, getting ready to die while sleeping, it came back suddenly. So he was so happy to the extent that he said, Oh Allah, thank you. I am your Lord and you are my servant. Because he was puzzled. He said, Allah is more pleased with you when you repent, then this man is pleased with his survival. You see how pleased you are when you survive death? Allah is more pleased when you repent. What does Allah want? He wants us all to go to heaven. Wallahu yad'u ila al wal maghfirati bi idni. Such people call to hellfire while God calls you to the gardens and forgiveness of his leave, by his leave. But God invites everyone to the home of peace. Wallahu yad'u ila dar salam And the Prophet ﷺ was walking with the companions and they saw a woman sticking her, an infant, to her stomach, breastfeeding him. Breastfeeding a baby. And the Prophet asked the companions, do you think this woman would ever throw her child in hellfire in, in, in hell? I'm yeah, sorry, in fire? They said, Of course not, O Prophet of Allah. He said, Allah is more merciful to his servants than this woman is merciful to her infant. Listen, Fir'aun, Pharaoh, who used to say, Ana Rabbukumul A'la, I am your highest Lord. Allah sent him two prophets. And he told them, go both of you to Pharaoh, for he has exceeded all bounds. Speak to him gently so that he may take heed or show respect. Speak to him gently. This is for someone who says, I am your highest Lord. How about those who say, 
Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Those who say in their sujood, glory be to the Lord, our Lord the highest. So if he is that gentle, even with Fir'aun, Subhanallah. Allah even made some ways that you benefit from and be rewarded even after your death. You can die and still be rewarded. How? The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, when a person dies, the counting of his deeds stops, except three types of deeds. An ongoing charity or useful knowledge. You wrote something, knowledge or book or a video or something. And the dua of a righteous child. So even you die, you still be rewarded. Now let's come to the dua of love. This is also another homework. You will say this dua every day once with reflection. Let me say it in Arabic first. Allahumma inni as'aluka hubbak wa hubba man yuhibbuk wa hubba amalin yuqarribuni ila hubbik. Means, Allah, I ask you your love and the love of whom you love. And the love of every deed that gets me closer to your love. Allahumma ma razaqtani ma uhib, faj'alhu quwwatan li fi ma tuhib. Oh Allah, when you grant me what I love, make it an empowerment for me to do what you love. Wa ma zawayta anni mimma uhib, فَاجْعَلْهُ فَرَاغًا لِي فِي مَا تُحِبُّ Oh Allah, if you ever deprive me from what I love, let it be the things that could have kept me busy from doing what you love. اللهم اجعل حبك أحب إلي من أهلي ومالي ومن الماء البارد على الضمأ. Oh Allah, make your love dearer to my heart than my family and my wealth and the cold water when I'm thirsty. Allahumma habibni ilayka wa ila malaikataka wa malaikatika wa anbiyaika wa rusulika wa ibadika salihin wa jalni mimman yuhibbuka wa yuhibbu malaikataka wa anbiyaika wa rusulika wa ibadika salihin. O Allah, love me and let your angels love me, and let your prophets and messengers love me, and let your righteous servants love me, and let me be among those who love you, and love your angels, and love your prophets, and love your messengers, and love your righteous servants. Allahumma ahyi qalbi bihubbik, wajjalni laka kama tuhib. اللهم اجعلني أحبك بقلبي كله وأرضيك بجسدي كله اللهم اجعل حبي كله لك وسعي كله في مرضاتك It means Allah with your love give life to my heart and let me be as you love me to be Allah let me love you from all my heart let me please you with all my body and let me love and let my love be for you and let all the striving be to please you. Compare this to the 10th commandment. You shall love the Lord, the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your might. The Prophet said, O oh Allah, let me love you from all my heart and let me please you with all my body. And let all my love be for you, and let all my striving be to please you. So, the homework. Number one, average of 60 minutes of reflection on the verses of the Quran every single day. Please, please, don't skip days. Don't skip days. If you don't have 60 minutes some days, okay, make it 40. Make it even 30. But don't skip days, please, to benefit from this workshop. 
Second, this dua, the dua of love, will be sent to you in an email, inshallah, in Arabic and in English. I want you to read it in your language and to reflect upon it. Okay? Word al ilhah Okay? Asking Allah to fix your heart and to fix your heart with the Quran a lot, a lot, insisting on that. This should be in every prayer. This should be before every time you read the Quran. You should insist and ask Allah that he does that to you. Second, we need to reflect 10 to 15 minutes every day on the creation of Allah. Look at a flower. Look at a leaf. Look at an animal. Look at anything created by Allah. Look in the sky and see, say, Subhanallah. Glory be to Allah. Say, Sun'allahi atqana kulla shay. The creation of Allah who perfected everything. And I want you to have a, uh, a block note or, or a paper or something and you start counting the gifts of Allah. I want you to count it. Write it down. What are the gifts given to you? What do you think Allah gave you? Write everything. Okay? Like that, we finished today. Uh, again, please send me your homework. Don't do the homework and then not send it to me, please. Second, uh, I have good news for you that I'm not coming next Friday or the one after us. So the first Friday that we will meet will be the 28th of February, inshallah. I'm going abroad. Make dua for me. It's something very important. Okay, please make dua for me. And uh, if you are watching this video on YouTube after, uh, in, after March or something, you don't need to make this dua because actually I'm already... It's something very urgent, actually. Make dua. Also, there will be an English nasiha after Isha every Friday. So even if I'm not here, and this will not be a part of the workshop, but the brothers will bring, inshallah, a speaker to give an English nasiha. So keep coming to the mosque also every Friday and stay for the the uh, dars or the nasiha okay i'm trying with some brothers now if not then someone else will come and substitute inshallah jazakumullah khairan and barakallah